Japan scrambles jets to monitor Chinese bombers near Okinawa and a drone near Taiwan. U.S.-China joint research papers fall for the first time in a decade amid political tensions. Panic salt buying emerges in China after Fukushima discharge. Chinese people continue to protest, don't accept CCP compensation. Japan's Defense Ministry on August 25th said it scrambled jet fighters to monitor Chinese Air Force bombers and drones flying near the country's southwestern Okinawa Island and Taiwan. Citing statements by the ministry, Reuters reported that two Chinese H-6 bombers were spotted flying through the strait between southwest Japan's Okinawa and Miyako Islands connecting the East China Sea and the Pacific on August 25th morning. Okinawa is home to one of the major American military bases in Asia-Pacific and the center of Japan and America's defense buildup to prevent China from attacking Taiwan or nearby Japanese islands. In a separate statement, the ministry reported spotting the Chinese military drone and other likely Chinese drones flying between Japan's westernmost Yaganugi Island and Taiwan during the day. Japan mobilized its air self-defense force jet fighter to follow the drones. The drones eventually turned towards mainland China. Taiwan's defense ministry reported renewed Chinese military activity around the island on August 25th, including 13 aircraft entering Taiwan's response zone and five ships carrying out combat readiness patrols. The number of research papers co-authored by scientists from the U.S. and China has dropped for the first time in nearly 30 years. This decline reflects the impact of the growing decoupling between the two countries due to increased political tensions. Nikkei Asia, citing data from Japan's Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology, reported that the total number of joint papers fell by 5% to 51,630 in 2021. This marked the first significant decrease since a slight drop in 1993. The U.S. and China signed the Science and Technology Agreement in 1979 by President Jimmy Carter and Chinese leader Deng Xiaoping after the two countries normalized their diplomatic relations. The agreement paved the way for Chinese scholars to work with U.S. counterparts in science. In 2017, China placed the U.S. as the top country in terms of the number of scientific papers. Over the last two decades, the number of joint research papers between the U.S. and China has surged by nearly 20 times. Despite a decrease in 2021, the U.S. remains China's primary collaborative partner contributing to 36% of all jointly written papers from China. The high number of Chinese students studying in the U.S. helps the collaboration in scientific research. These students have contributed to the bilateral cooperation between the two nations. According to the Institute of International Education, Chinese students account for about 30% of all international students in the U.S., with around 300,000 students. However, concerns have been raised by the intelligence community that China might exploit this cooperation in scientific research for espionage purposes. Intelligence officials have noted that China views American universities as soft targets in the global espionage battle. They are urging universities to take action to address this issue. Bill Evanina, former counterintelligence official in the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, told NBC in 2020 about the importance of universities in driving innovation, technology, and research. That's where the science and technology originates, and that's why it's the most prime place to steal. On August 23rd, the Biden administration decided to renew a short-term extension of the science and technology agreement with China, despite mounting pressure from certain U.S. lawmakers. They warned that Beijing could exploit the deal for security and military gains. Chinese shoppers rushed to stock up on salt after Japan released treated radioactive water into the Pacific Ocean from the wrecked Fukushima nuclear plant. According to NHK World Japan, public anxiety in China about food safety has been increasing, especially regarding salt produced from seawater. As a result, salt shelves were emptied at a supermarket in the capital, Beijing, on August 25th. Local media say supermarkets around the nation are running out of salt. Many videos circulated online show Chinese citizens hoarding salt. As reported by Kyoto News, panic buying also came from a Chinese belief based on the rumor that iodized salt can help protect against nuclear radiation. 
According to Reuters, several salt brands sold out on online food delivery sites in the coastal province of Fujian, in parts of Beijing, and then the commercial capital of Shanghai. One user wrote on the microblogging platform Weibo, It's really not necessary to hoard salt, but when I saw loads of people panic buying this morning, I quietly ordered 10 packets. He added, I bought lake salt and salt from salt mines. I now avoid sea salt. The Chinese Communist Party, CCP, has announced that it will strictly investigate suspected cases of speculative stocking of salt. The Fukushima plant suffered a triple meltdown following the March 2011 earthquake and tsunami. Water used to cool molten fuel at the plant mixes with rain and groundwater. The accumulated water is treated to remove most radioactive substances, but still contains tritium. Before discharging the water, the plant's operator dilutes the treated water to reduce tritium levels to about one-seventh of the World Health Organization's guidelines for drinking water quality. On August 4th, the website of CCTV, the CCP's mouthpiece, published a report titled, Bajo Hebei, Rain Caused Some Villages to be Submerged, All Those Trapped Were Transferred. CCTV also said flooding in Bajo was due to the influence of rain. According to Sound of Hope, the CCTV's report sparked public outrage. Hundreds of people in Bajo gathered in front of the city hall on August 5th to demand explanations and compensation from the Chinese Communist Party CCP regime. They held up banners, give us back the house, obviously due to the unannounced flood discharge, but said it was from the rain. However, the authorities deployed many police equipped with riot gear to disperse the protesters. However, the people are not afraid. On August 23rd, they gathered again to protest because they were dissatisfied with the CCP's compensation. The people in Jin Jiaobao village, Bajo City, said that they only received compensation for nearly $137, 1,000 yuan, for damage caused by the CCP's unannounced flood release. Online video shows Jin Jiaobao villagers gathering to light candles in the dark. Someone in the crowd said that they would make a fuss if the authorities didn't solve the issues related to the compensation. One more video shows a crowd protesting at a CCP authority office in the village of Jinjiabao. Unannounced flood discharges in China have long been common in each flood season. Observers say that this action shows that the CCP regime undervalues people's lives.